Hey, Angelo, thanks for joining us today. Is way of getting started. Give us a little background on yourself. Hey, Brian. Yeah, thanks for having me. Um, yeah, I feel like I'm pretty typical of what a lot of people that you interview um, actually didn't start out in sales and didn't think that I wanted to do sales uh, initially. Imagine that. Um, started, I kind of went to college, didn't really graduate, kind of same <laughs> like you, you know? Did the night school thing and then uh, got a tech support job at a, at a startup. Oh. Hated that. Um, and then found my way as an SDR and then kind of been working ever since in sales. And did you like it at first? Um, no, <laughs> yes and no. Uh, I, it was incredibly difficult. It was, believe it or not, I would say more difficult than tech support. Um, you know, doing cold calls. Yeah. Um, and I think the hardest thing was just sort of uh, trying to like not having any sort of roadmap or like a, kind of a structure as to, okay, if you do these things, this is what will happen. Yeah. Um, you know, and throughout my life, it's, there's not really a lot that's like that, you know, in school, right. it's pretty straightforward. You have a syllabus. Uh, so I think that's, what's really interesting about sales is it's, it's very, like it's kind of like entrepreneurship in that you really don't have any guidance. It's just figure it out. Well, all you have to do is work harder. <laughs> yeah. You know, what um, I hear. that's what I hear works. <laughs> well, it's, it's funny because, uh, so I, I was an SDR and then I, uh, I, I ended up, you know, I, I did pretty well, um, got promoted quickly uh, I think they really liked me at, at my company and, and I'm still at that company actually. And it's, it's a wonderful place, but um, kind of the first year um, of sales being a, a true um, kind of quota carrying rep, I kind of, that was my mindset was just, just work hard, just work hard. And, oh. you know, it, it didn't work. <laughs> and that's one thing about sales that a lot of people don't talk about. Because yeah. the, the answer is always just do more of it instead of figuring out a smarter way of doing it. Yeah. Um, and what was it about college you didn't like? Was it just that it wasn't your bag? Yeah, I, I didn't like, I just never really was big into school. Maybe I was a bit of a procrastinator, kind of disorganized, um, you know, didn't was very terrible, like very terrible at, you know, turning in, turning in papers on time and doing that sort of thing. It's just, it was very anxiety inducing for me. I liked to be able to kind of explore and learn on my own. That was always a, I would say, even as a child, uh, something that I had as a strength and something that you talk a lot about. And it, early on, when I heard it from you on one of your podcasts, I think it was the kind of brutal truth about sales and selling or the, no, it was actually the questions podcast. You mentioned curiosity as a, as a strategy and strength, and that resonated with me a lot because I've always been a very curious person, Never, not necessarily a rule follower, but very curious. And that's good because that's a hard skill to learn if you don't have it already. Yeah. And in sales, it's like nobody teaches you or even wants you to be curious. It's all right. about the transaction. And listen to me, hear about me and my product and how great it is. Well, how long did it take before you became comfortable in sales? Gosh, um, well, it, it probably took me at least a year to get comfortable with the kind of day-to-day uh, -day aspects of selling or sort of just like like the demo and the pitch and, and talking to different people and and being comfortable with uh, uncomfortable situations that probably took me about a year but yeah. it, what was interesting was it kind of simultaneously like at the same time I started to get better because I was focusing less on the activity and a lot less on kind of the quantity strategy, the hard working strategy. And I was like, well, how can I be more effective? Um, and actually part of that was, you know, listening to a lot of what you said, um, joining the course, which if anybody who's listening to this, absolutely do it. I mean, if you want to make a lot of money, if you want to do well, listen to the course. Brian did not tell me to, to say this. This is just my personal experience. Um, just understanding how sales works. And, and what happens when you understand how it works is, 
all of a sudden you have less stress. Yeah, right? because that's it. Because a lot of it is you don't know where you are. Yeah. You know where you want to go, but you don't know how to get there. And you don't know why you're not there already. Right, right. <laughs> um, and I think the coolest thing has been not just learning for myself. And, and, and I've kind of went, so when I started with your course, Brian, I was at the bottom. It was, I was selling hotel software in the middle of COVID. I remember. Yeah, uh, you well, remember. On the other side, I was like, how can I help this guy? I'm like, <laughs> I don't know if I could do that, right? Because it was like, but yeah. it worked, right? I mean, it it worked so well. Um, it, it was kind of incredible. I mean, it took about a month, right? I remember just the first month, it was, it was consistency. It was just listening to all of the office hours. It was going through and um, mapping my process, thinking about my sale. Um, and, you know, I, I threw up a goose egg the first month that, that I kind of started with your course. Um, and it was, it was tough. Right. But I, but I felt like I was getting close. And then that second month, I mean, this was incredible. I, I, I sold software to a hotel that was closed and this wasn't even like the kind of hotel that typically buys because I was employing the strategies that we talked about. And it was, once it closed, I remember I immediately messaged you on LinkedIn. I was like, Brian. I just closed. I just closed this deal. I can't believe it happened. And then all of a sudden I was just hooked. And this was, if I remember right, it was right around March, April of 2020, right? Yeah. And it that was, was when that was, yeah, sorry. Peak, yeah. peak. It was like the world's ending and yeah. you were, I guess you still are selling marketing software to hotels. Yes. Yes, exactly. Exactly. And I was like, you know, as the teacher, I'm like, why is it the people only join who are selling the hardest of the hard? <laughs> I know, right? I know. Why can't we get any order takers? Yeah, right? those are easy to help. Yeah. And well, yeah. Sorry. Well, what did you try before the course? Because I'm sure the company had a process that they they believed in. You had a good product. They're, 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 it works you know, during normal times, there's a need for it. Right. right. Yeah. <laughs> um, I would say so before that, before the course, what I really tried was, gosh, I mean, I, I did try to pick my colleagues brains. Yeah. And what I found was it, when I would sit there and interview my colleagues that were the highest performing reps and ask them sort of post facto you know, okay, how do you sell? What did you do well? You know, there was a lot of truisms and platitudes. Platitudes. Right? And it wasn't very helpful for me. What do you do with that, right? It, it made me more frustrated. And I was just like, okay, let me just, what, be more, uh, bring insights, you know? It's like- Listen kind of better yeah. or, you know, say this. Yeah. But to, to, the, to, to kind of, the other side of that and to really and to the credit of my colleagues what i found was listening to their calls is when i started to learn actually what works yeah and what did you hear in the calls i heard so the, the first thing i did was um i would go through because we use like gong right the call yeah. software um i would listen and i would try to understand okay what was the customer saying what were they asking? Why were they asking it? Like, what was the intention? And then how did the rep respond? Yes. And that, that is gold. Because yeah. everybody's talking about the insight or what to say. It's what the customer is asking. Right. How, how do they perceive this? Yeah. What, what turns them on? What do they like? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And, um, you know, I, and I think that was, that was important. Um, but, but what, what's so incredible, Brian, and this is something, you know, again, I know, you know, to, to kind of go back to the course and sort of my ultimate takeaway. And I think what's the most fantastic thing about sales is once you get it and you understand the, the meta framework, what you realize is the deals that other P other reps say, oh, you have no shot. You can't do it. All of a sudden you can close these deals. And it's, it's incredible because those deals, kind of the marginal deals, those are the ones that I find you can 
charge a way higher premium. You can you can actually make more money for the company. Um, these marginal complex deals. Um, and that was something that was that was really incredible. And now what I do is, I mean, a lot of the stuff that I've learned with you, I even implement with my team. It actually took a long time because I, you know, I've been trying to to help my team. It didn't catch on early on at all. Yeah. But but now, you know, especially when you start crushing it, you start hitting President's Club. Because in then the following year, the, the way the story goes, it was 2020 was, I mean, it was it was early COVID. It was the end of the world, you know. I was just trying to cold call hotels while they were closed and their life was ending to sell them marketing software, which is insane. But kind of, I ended up really rebounding towards the end of the year and then made President's Club the following year. And now this year, I'm already on track to, to, to blow it out. Um, and so now people are listening and, and asking me and I'm just kind of, Implement, I'm just giving them a lot of what, what I've uh, learned with you, actually. One of the, the most impactful things that is very small but instead of asking the, 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 really, the really annoying question of any questions. Yeah, that's a real great question. Yeah. <laughs> what, what do you do now? Nope. Right. Nope. Asking, what is your reaction to this? Every single time I've asked that, I've gotten an answer. Yeah. And <clears throat> for the people who don't know, when you say, what do you think, or what am I missing, or any other questions, it almost gets a, a stimulus response, yep. like hitting your knee with the hammer at the doctor's office. It's like, it's like uh, going into a retail store and it's like, can I help you? Yeah. Naturally, it's like, just looking, right? Yeah, exactly. Just looking, right. What's your reaction gets into what's what's really going on? Because it's a feeling, it's an emotion. It's not a lot, it's not even logic yet. Right. Yeah. Right. And what do people usually say? Gosh, um, I mean, it ranges from, but but it ranges, right? I mean, typically it's you'll get everything from on the one end, you'll get the uh kind of honest, like oh, this is great, but, and then all of a sudden they start telling you the reasons why this might not work out. And that's, that's what you need to hear. That's, that's what you want to know. That's your competition. Right. It's the competition. Um, and on the other end, you'll get, you know, if you, if you did a good enough job of sort of understanding what they care about, why they're talking to you, um, and then kind of positioning the, the product towards what they care about, um, they're like, this is incredible. And I've seen... I've seen now customers who are almost more excited to get to buy my marketing software than I am. And that's magic. That is magical. It's such an incredible feeling when your customers are more excited than you are even. And you're getting yeah, a, yeah. a lot of people would look at this as not that complex of a sale, but it really is, isn't it? Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, and I, th okay, this is something else that I think is, 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 is difficult to navigate because our company has grown a lot. Uh, we've made some acquisitions and as we've gotten bigger and we have private equity companies that are, that are now kind of managing the show, um, they want, they want to make it sort of, as you would put it, the, um, conveyor belt <laughs> factory, 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 revenue factory, yeah. revenue factory. And, and that's sort of their view, but what they don't understand is that um, all, every, like, no one sale is the same, right. but having a framework of, well, next steps, reasons to continue the conversation, um, you know, who else can say no, looking at your deals in, in those terms, um, it's, it, it is, I think like your analogy that you've said before was just you know, you're, you want to, you don't want to ask them what's the appropriate next step. You want to get, you want to tell them, this is how we are going to get this done essentially. Yeah. And <clears throat> the analogy I use a lot is being a, a concierge or a guide mm -hmm. because you know what the next step should be. Yes. Why not kind of lead them towards that? Yeah. Because they don't know what the next step is. Typically, is I want to think about it. Right. Which, you know, yes, you should allow some time to think about it, but we need to do something. Right. We need to get your, get your IT team involved, get, get your, your uh, operations folks, you know, who's your, you know, your direct report, you know, who, 
does that person matter? Are they just kind of, is that a red herring? Is this a non-issue? Um, absolutely. I think a lot of, I, I, I think that we, we expect people to, like you always say, know how to buy, but, but that's something I've talked to a lot of my reps, a lot of the other reps, uh, cause I'm still, I'm still a quota carrying rep, but you know, I, we're, I really want to help my team. I really care about my team. And what I tell them is, is like, okay, if, how do you bought purchase something for our company? Like I asked them that question. They have no idea. They're like, no idea. Uh, Who does? Yeah. Okay. Um, I send it to the, to my VP, I guess, but well, is, is that, is that how you do it? You know? And that's what they end up doing. They send it to their boss who never heard of this. Yeah. And there's no context, no prioritization, no due diligence, no story behind it. Of why we're doing this. Why now? Why not with someone else? What's the problem we're trying to solve? Yeah. And, you know, because I was thinking the other day, it's like, when I buy a car, how do I buy it? I don't buy a car like anyone else buys a car. Right. right. I search the internet. I drive by the dealership five or 10 times when it's not open. I go look at them. And then when the pressures of my existing car breaks down, <laughs> then yeah. I explore. Yeah. But is that a decision making process? No, it's like whatever feels comfortable at the time. Right. Right. But if you, we've been through these deals and we know what it takes to get it done, and it's not just forwarding a proposal. That, that's the key to not getting it done. Yeah, exactly. Now, well, where'd your motivation come from? Because, I mean, you did this with your own money and your own time. Yeah. Your own motive. And you did the work. Yeah. You didn't, like, audit the course. You took the course. Yeah. Did the map to money. Um, the motivation came from just a desire. I guess on the one hand, it's it was a desire. I really wanted to make a lot of money. I really wanted to 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 be successful, but I think it was sort of forced because I wasn't the cookie cutter person who could kind of take the traditional employment route. I wasn't. I knew that that I wasn't going to be able to get the degree, get the get the entry level job at a white you know the white collar entry level job, and work your way up for twenty years. I, I always kind of broke the rules. I always, I was the kid getting kicked out of class all the time for arguing with the teacher. Um, but I was also very, you know, I, I thought that I had a lot of intellectual ability as well. And so I wanted to find something that allowed me to make a lot of money and maximize my strengths. And, and when I, you know, when I realized that sales was the ability to, was that opportunity for me, it, it, it sort of was like, I'm just passionate about this profession and everything that entails sales, sort of like I think how you are about sales. Well, that's it, because a lot of us end up in sales, you know, because we don't fit into like school. Exactly. Whether we don't have the attention span or we don't think the way the books and school teaches us and wants us to think. Yep. Or we just can't sit still and we need variety during the distractions during the day. Yes. But doesn't mean we're not smart or ambitious or capable of doing a lot. Right. Uh, right. And, and yeah, sorry, Joe. What was it like after you made that president's club that year? What, what did that feel like? Um, it felt very validating. It felt actually more motivating. It was like, okay. I've, I've mapped it out. I've kind of built, you know, I've, I've built the algorithm. I have the rough draft of the algorithm. Now let's tune it in and let's get to the next level. It was just like a, to me, it was a stepping stone. It was a really exciting development, but I, it was by no means was I satisfied. It was just, okay, now I have it all. I have it all. I have my process. How can we get to the next level? Um, and so, you know, one of the things that I, I really pride, I had pro oh, took a lot of pride in was, you know, we had another rep who he just hit every single month and it was the most incredible thing. And I, and I, I, I strive towards that. And I was like, and I was grinding and I was trying, that was my goal to hit every month. But then I realized I was like, I don't know if this is the right goal for me to be focused on. Yeah. And so I reprioritized and I said, what if I can bring in the highest value deals for kind of my, my, you know, my, tier my territory it, deals that were like 
double or triple what everyone else was doing to the same type of accounts. And so that was what I focused on. I was like, how can I do that? And now it's, it's almost a norm. It's, it's just kind of my, it's just what I'm doing. And I'm going after, I'm finding ways to get out, go after these more complex deals um, and, and make a lot of money for the company. And everybody loved that. And that's it because a lot of people, certainly early in sales, think sales is kind of like a personality trait <laughs> as opposed to, you know, a profession <laughs> where you understand how companies change why they would change and how to help them change. Yes. Um, but you don't seem that analytical, but you seem mm -hmm. a, a good match between the analytical and the personality. Is that yeah. accurate or? That's interesting you say that. I would, I think that um, when it comes to sort of the empathy, uh, you know, I don't think I was born with the most empathy. I think I was always a little bit more just kind of focused on what I cared about and didn't really worry about other things, you know? <laughs> Anyone else cares about it? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just to be honest. But I think kind of um, gaining that outward mindset, um, because I've always gaining that outward mindset and, 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 and that empathy and that emotional intelligence and pairing it with, you know, just the ability to understand the way people um operate and kind of apply my own sort of curiosity about the world. I think that that combination together is what is, is pretty exciting because, you know, there's a benefit to being, in, you know, having that analytical skills, but I think Definitely. sort of the, yeah. the cost. Yeah. I think the cost is oftentimes people are not, don't have the ability or, or kind of aren't focused on what other people are thinking and feeling. And it's so critical in the enterprise sale because you've got to put together your strategy based off of how they're going to receive yes. it. <clears throat> and was there a particular moment or epiphany where, because clearly you had the natural curiosity to argue with teachers, which is good. Yeah. <laughs> but how do you take that curiosity, which is the first step to empathy? Was there an epiphany? Because I seem to remember one during one of our one-on-ones that yeah. stuck with me that I, I thought was the breakthrough. You may not have, but. Yeah, I mean, I, uh, I, I probably was, you know, there's so much kind of running through my head at that time. And still, I'm always kind of just stacking things up and in my, in my own mind, I would say. I would say, I really think that first deal that I got early COVID was a breakthrough was it was the, the, the breakthrough because it showed me that this, that sales is not a numbers game, that it's about what you do. Yes. And was it that one where it went to the board and they approved it? If yes. I remember. Yeah. Yeah. And for the people listening, this, that was like April, right? That yeah. was a month after the shutdown and your customers were basically had nothing coming in. Right. They were closed, <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. and you're selling them marketing software. Right. And it's like, yeah, not, not, it wasn't, it wasn't ideal, but um, I, I think it's, it's, that's the incredible thing of, of when you get it, when you under, when you pair all of the different components of what it means to be sort of that, that seller. And, and I think, uh, I think something else that really was um, impactful for me too was uh, from your book that uh, um, the the Maverick mindset that I have on audiobook and I listen to it probably once a month was just sort of in coming up with the idea of what a Maverick is like conceptualizing the Maverick and how that's different from the A player uh, yeah. and the B player and the C player um, and sort of giving me something to strive towards like I wanted to be the Maverick. You know, and, and it's 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 a it's a moving target. It's not like I'm there and, and it's set. And I think that's what's baked into that is it's a moving target. You move, you consistently move towards that, but having something to strive towards um, and having a lot of pride in, in in selling and understanding that you're like you said, it's not just the personality thing. It's nice. it's really just oftentimes sometimes I I feel like I'm the the one who's out of out of the loop with my team. I feel like I'm sort of the one who's least personable out of my team. Believe it or not. Well. <laughs> The personality thing can be misinterpreted. Not everybody likes the gregarious, outgoing life of the party. 
Absolutely. And I think you're naturally have maverick type characteristics like the arguing with the teacher not fitting in yeah. to the natural progression of you know high school college whatever that gets you thinking outside of the box because i gotta believe if you if you continued kind of doing what you were told that you wouldn't have made president's club mm -mm. no way there, there's no chance um, because I, I had tried that and it didn't work. And, and that's one of the key things that I saw when I got into sales, that the, the people that were doing unbelievable stuff were not following, you know, some book step-by-step -step process. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The day the, something drove them and they didn't, they don't, when I say break the rules, they don't. I don't mean laws. I mean, they, they kind of don't let the rules rule them. Exactly. They think, well, what, if I had anything I could do, what would I do? Yeah. So you can start thinking through what's going to get this deal going. Right. Because you hear too many reps. Oh, my manager wouldn't let me do that. I can't do that. I can't do this. I can't do it. Well, okay. But what can you do? <laughs> yeah. Right. What can you do? Um, I don't know, create commercial insights. I mean, <laughs> I well, that's it, it because they hear that on LinkedIn or YouTube and there's nothing wrong with it. No, of course it's, not. Right. But it's like, it's like coming up with great questions yeah. or a great cold call opener. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Great subject line. Right. Tips and tricks. Love them, <laughs> but they don't close deals. No, no, no. It's sort of the, it, it is understanding the framework. Yes. It's understanding that it's the totality. It's sort of like, there isn't one thing. I mean, there's many, it's, it's like I say, I like with, I think sales and life as well are just a series of Venn diagrams where yes. overlap and, and you got to understand that and, 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 and look, and when you look at your deals, understand that it's sort of like, you need to do like, when you don't make your number, it's on you. It's not on anyone else. So you need to do what you need to do to get to your number yeah. within too, reason, within all laws. Right. And, all that, right. and too many people get comfortable because the excuses and the rationalizations of why you don't feel good. Right. But they don't get you anywhere. They get you probably backwards because now you think you did an A job or a B job when it doesn't matter. You didn't get the deal. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. And I think um, there's... Uh, maybe this is just my company because um, my company is a it's a pretty special place I, I it really means a lot to me just the people I have very close relationships with all the people from the from the exact team all the way down just very close relationships um, and I think it's maybe it's conscious maybe they talk about it behind closed doors or maybe it's sort of an unconscious understanding but you know the way I see the rules is like they're sort of like if you get the, just the get guidelines, the there's suggestions, yeah, strong suggestions. <laughs> right. Yeah, strong suggestions. But ultimately, I think they, I, I get this sense that they almost want me to break the rules. You know, everybody loves a surprise and everybody hates a disappointment. And when you give a big, big surprise, it's amazing what's forgiven. <laughs> totally. Cool. Hey, I really appreciate your time today. Where can people go to connect and follow you? Yeah, I'm on LinkedIn, uh, Angelo Valley. Uh, you can find me V-A-L-L-E -L -L -E is my last name. Um, I, I reshare a lot of your stuff, Brian. Uh, I'm pretty active on LinkedIn. So uh, anybody who who's interested in sales, please connect with me. We'd love to love to chat with you.